Good morning. Um, welcome to my talk, Exploring Ember, TypeScript, and Tie Charts. A little bit about me. I currently am a front-end software engineer at Adapar for the Navigator team. And before working at Adapar, I co-founded Hopforce, which is a healthcare software company. And actually, the story that I'm going to tell today took place during development at Hopforce, but is relevant to all Ember stakeholders. I actually started developing in Ember about six years ago. And in 2018, I took my first trip to New York for an Ember-related work, and I had a, the pleasurable experience of my first subway ride in New York City, which was really exciting, and I was super excited to get down to the platform. I just had one concrete staircase to conquer, and I did trip, go head over heels down the staircase and break my foot. So me standing in here in front of you today is actually a redemption story of me returning to New York and still contributing to the Ember community. So let me start with a little bit more context. Hopforce owns and develops the PDPM calculator, which is a nursing home software that allows administrators to go in and enter patient diagnoses in order to calculate the reimbursement they will get on Medicare Part A. So as administrators started entering more and more data, they started to ask more complex questions about this data, such as how many COVID patients did our facility treat in July of 2020, or what was the total reimbursement expected from our depression patients last month? In order for us to answer these questions, we wanted to build a data analytics tool. And so the first decision we made was we're gonna integrate our Enter Ember app with HiCharts which if you don't know is a very complex and great data visualization tool. So I'm actually gonna to start today to show you where we're going and the feature that we ended up building. So here it is. This is our little data analytics tool. It's showing our high charts graph re-rendering upon each click of a different grouping. Here you're seeing the nursing case mix groups, which are different nursing category diagnoses. And we can, yeah, so here's the chart re-rendering and re-rendering with revenue and then we actually can group the different things to nursing care levels, months, weeks, years, et cetera. So this is what we built. So now I'm gonna go into how did we get there? And this video is looping, okay. So this, there are really three pillars to this story. The first is using Ember modifier. We actually started using a wrapper add-on, which I'll get into soon. And then we converted to an Ember modifier. And then we were able to use Ember import to implement lazy loading. And then finally, we converted from JavaScript to TypeScript and Glint. So at the very beginning, here's our very first iteration of code. And we were using the Ember High Charts wrapper add-on in order to do this. It's a pretty um, simple invocation of the High Charts add-on and then a few arguments, which I will note because this is a wrapper, these are not the actual direct arguments that the high charts library itself is using, which I'm gonna get back to. And the accompanying JavaScript file is essentially just JSON populating the chart options that high charts takes in. So as our feature started to develop to increase in complexity, we started to find some drawbacks to the wrapper add-on that we were using. The first is that is obstructing high charts built-in types, which was a bummer because these types are really nice and robust and help to use the library. And then as I just mentioned, they're using different arguments. So that forced us to not only learn high charts, the library we really wanted to use, but also read about and learn more about the wrapper add-on and how that's abstracting as well. Finally, we had some issues with scroll position and initial rendering. In some cases, the chart would be missing, missing on initial render. And then when changes needed to be made for the graph to re-render, we would lose our scroll position, which would force you know, the scroll position to default to the top of the page, and most times this would push the graph out of sight so the user would miss the re-render entirely. So kind of thinking about these drawbacks, we started to dig into, well, what actually is this wrapper add-on doing for us? And also, what is an add-on anyways? So this, there's three layers of abstraction here. The first is our Ember app, which in this case was the PDPM calculator. And then the middleman was the wrapper, wrapper add-on that we were using called Ember High Charts. And then third, the actual library we're trying to use, which was High Charts, of course. And it should be mentioned that the reason that wrapper add-ons were initially created in this context were to help us to get access to these third-party libraries. And so in this case, they're really adding, they're acting as um, a layer of glue. And they, can be, wrapper add-ons can be very useful and have been for some time. And however, they can be difficult for us to customize and change to our liking. So digging a little bit deeper now into the Ember High Charts add-on specifically, 
some history here, you may notice this add-on was built during the time of Ember native components before converting to Glimmer components. So you may see some remnants of that here. And you may also notice there's the did insert and did update Ember render modifiers being used. These are trying to track the insertion and updating of the DOM. So essentially the crux of what is trying to, what is going on here is that the add-on was using a component to try to track the state of the DOM and trying to use a component to manipulate the DOM instead of manip manipulating the DOM itself. So it was kind of, again, like another third layer and using more modifiers to do so. So this led us to start to wonder, is there a way that we can actually just manipulate the DOM directly instead of having this third middleman? And this, of course, led us to looking at Ember modifier. So what's really awesome about this slide right here is this actually shows the 14 lines of code that we were able to write to replace the entire usage of the add-on itself. So again, what is a mod modifier? It allows us to manipulate the DOM directly. And this is important because a component's job is really to manage state, not the DOM. And what's going on here is this modify function is taking in the, the DOM element we're going to manipulate and the positional arguments, the options. And if the chart's been rendered, it will trigger the update and track the this DOM element, and then otherwise, it will just use the imported chart function from high charts to render the chart. And this, in theory, could we could have made this an add-on, and this could be used similarly to other add-ons. But it's also nice to kind of see this new pattern of not really needing an add-on at all, and just using this small bit of code that we can customize ourselves to integrate with a third-party library. And the best part is, here's the invocation of that modifier. It's just one line. Um, of course, this is the invocation on a div element. And here's kind of you know, the bigger picture. Here's the an original modifier. Here's the invocation on a div. And then zooming out just a little bit farther, here's the entire demo GJS file. So this is some demo credit I wrote for the purpose of this talk um, using our simplified modifier version. So yeah, there it is. And there's our chart options, quite simple. And so here's the demo little thing that I built for this talk here. And of course, in the spirit of being in New York, I thought, what could be a fun data visualization to show everyone? And then I learned about the pizza principle. So some native New Yorkers maybe already know what this is, but I just learned. Turns out that this is an economic concept discovered in the 1980s, but has been true since the 1960s, that the average price of one slice of cheese pizza in New York has matched almost exactly the fare of one MTA subway ticket in New York. <laughs> Yeah, really love the New York subway, so. Um, and actually, it should also, I guess, be noted that this did recently change in 2023, 2024, and there's many financial articles that you can read about it, so I'm not sure what's up with that, but New York is in uproar about this. So anyways, here is, here's what I built, here's my demo. So you can see the graph re-render, and then just a cool little high charts feature that here's the tooltips hovering over the prices of the fare and the pizza slices. So another cool thing about Ember modifier is that we can actually invoke them on a component, as long as this component has attributes. So here's an example of us doing just that, and also adding a little toggle piece so that I can sh better exemplify re-rendering up the graph. So just to zoom in more, here's our component called Fancy Box. It's just an arbitrary component that's going to add you know, a border and has to take attributes because that is where the modifier is going to be passed in. And then there's invocation, simple, just the same way as we would with a div element. And here's this same demonstration again. It allows us to re-render the graph going between a line and a bar chart. Oh, and a quick note, this is going to come up in a bit. You'll see this little hamburger menu. This is actually a module we're getting from high charts that allows us to export the data into a PDF, get the CSV or data that's accompanying the graph. So once we conquered the Ember modifier, we thought, well, let's add lazy loading so that we don't have to load the entirety of this massive high charts library um, unnecessarily. We'll only load it when we need it. So you'll see our original modifier on the bottom left. And then on the top right, here's 
just a normal, here's us just importing the modules that we need, the exporting data modules, what I just mentioned with that hamburger menu, and then exporting as normal. Um, now let's go from that example to lazy loading. So this is where it gets cool. We're now able to, if you look at this load high charts task, we can actually import high charts and the high charts modules that we'd like to use dynamically. And what I'd like to point out here is that this is an ability that we have both in Ember Auto Import and Embroider. So yeah, this is, that's what I wanted to touch on here. And so let's, let me take a progress check. Let's see, where did we start? We started with implementing this modifier invoking it on another component. Now we've just added lazy loading, which is now something we can do in most Ember apps with Ember import or embroider, auto import, sorry. So now that we've conquered, we've done this, the next thing that we are now able to do that we're not using the add-on is access the high charts types, which is again, really nice. They have robust types and a really, really large documentation. So. Um, being able to navigate those with type hints and type errors would really aid us in development and help the third party integration. So what does our modifier look like in TypeScript? Here it is. We're, now you can see us actually using these high charts types. There are modify functions taking in a HTML element, which is an important distinction of what type of element it accepts. And then we're getting our positional arguments, which are high charts options. and just to zoom in on our signature a bit, here's that again, exactly. So we're taking an initial moment, we're expecting high charts options. And then we're gonna convert, this is our demo now GTS Glint file. Um, and highlighting again, what do our chart options look like? And then we also can see, well, there's many different types of series and charts and things that uh, high charts takes in. So for example, our series has to be a of type series option type. And now let's look at some of these type hints and type errors in action. Let's say, for example, we go back to our modifier and we want to change the type of the element to an SVG element. And for the demo purposes, I've already updated here the element that's passed into modifier to be an SVG type. Otherwise, we'd see our first cascading uh, type error here. So now we're getting a type hint that's telling us the chart function that we imported from high charts to actually render the chart does not accept an SVG element. It only accepts type HTML element. So instead of us digging through the docs to try to understand the implementation of that function, there it is right there. And then to continue this example even further, let's say that we've now reverted our modifier type to be of, HT, of type to HTML element, but we changed the type signature of our fancy box component to an SVG. We're also gonna get hit with another type error. Finally, when we go to invoke the modifier on this component with these conflicting types, we're once again seeing the same type error. So we're getting, we're pulling information from high charts. We are not able to invoke a SVG on an HTML. So that's really nice. And really just to drive this point home, here's the high charts DTS file. So these are, I, this video could go on for hours. Um, yeah, these are all the types in high charts. So not being on TypeScript was a pretty big disadvantage and something that using wrapper add-on wouldn't allow us to do. And then one more type hint just to drive it home. Um, what type of options does high charts accept? Well, it's string. So if we type in something arbitrary like four, we're obviously gonna get hit with a type error there. So really just to recap, what this is, is an Ember interoperability story. We're now, Ember modifiers allow us to stop building wrapper add-ons and customize much smaller modifiers ourselves. Both Ember auto import and Ember support dynamic importing, which can be great for lazy loading. And Ember is increasing in interoperability by evidence of how easily we can integrate with third-party libraries with less glue. So 14 lines of a modifier, no add-on needed, and we're able to use this really powerful data visualization tool. And then finally, TypeScript and Glint are great technologies that assist with the Ember interoperability story. Thank you very much.